Welcome back to the lecture series on bioenergetics of life processes. So, <clears throat> if you recollect in the previous lecture, we talked about the different level of transitions which have may have happened or must have happened or what we speculate may have happened is uh, when the earth was formed and that is also a very challenging question how it was formed. It was a very harsh environment, rich in UV, high temperature, extremely high pressure possibly. It was something where what we call today's life form could have never survived. In those harsh conditions, as the earth was cooling down, it was rich in sulfur, iron, sulfur dioxide, <coughs> things like you know hydrogen sulfide so on and so forth. Possibly in that milieu as earth was cooling down certain molecules started to self assemble and if you recollect what we talked about in the last class in terms of the chemical evolution. So, this is where we were. So, this was an inorganic world as the evolutionary pathway was moving through. And this is where <coughs> some of these inorganic molecules started to form. So, compounds were getting formed. Then something happened. We do not know what it was, but there was certain form of a self assemble properties of molecule which evolved. Molecules which prefer to self assemble to form definitive structures. Why this part is very important is, <clears throat> so, so this is where we were talking about in the last class. So, let us start the lecture 3, lecture 3 20, okay. So, this point where we are in a world which is rich in inorganic molecules. So, these inorganic molecules started to self assemble to form definitive structure and this self assembly what kind of inorganic compounds which are involved in it we really do not know we have a guess we have a fair guess and based on the fair guess. <clears throat> it is believed most of these compounds were again there are a lot of controversies you will find literature by different people who do not accept this kind of theory but there is something called a iron sulfur world theory this was postulated by Gunther Wachterhauser. So, according to this, if you follow the Gunther Wachterhauser's theory, according to this, this kind of self assembly which occurred was mostly of iron and sulfur compounds in the form of FeS2, FeS, so and so forth. And if you look at the valency of iron either in FeS, or FeS2, they are all at a lower valency, plus 2. As you know, the iron could remain in ferrous and ferric state. So, these were all plus 2. So, this was a world which was not having any kind of oxygen. This was an anaerobic world. The reason and apart from it, there were compounds in and around it like you know platinum, vanadium, manganese, there are so many such mixing molybdenum likewise okay and uh, possibly it is believed that this kind of molecules 
form a kind of, say for example, a framework of self-assembly like this, which was the beginning of forming something what we call today's cell or a confined structure, something like this. Again, this is all a speculation that this was the world where iron sulfur compounds, FeS2, pyrite, which we know in today's world, iron pyrite, they self-assembled. They self-assembled to form a confined structure. Why it is still holding the fort in spite of the fact there are many controversies to this. This is where we close the last class. The reason being, if we look at the modern day, especially while we'll be talking about the structure of chloroplast and mitochondria, we will find a lot of electron transfer proteins, okay? We'll see a lot of electron transfer proteins. And as a matter of fact, these electron transfer proteins will be the key molecular moieties what we'll be studying in this course time and again as we'll be talking about chloroplast, we'll be talking in mitochondria. Essentially, we'll be talking about the electron transfer which happens through these electron transfer proteins. So, if you look at these electron transfer proteins carefully, so what you will observe, so whether it is, say for example, whether it is cytochrome, or we talk about other electron transfer proteins like ferrodoxins and likewise. So, you will observe rubidoxin, ferrodoxin, okay. You will observe one unique feature about them. They are more like this. Say for example, iron, sulfur, 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 sulfur. Here you have amino acids like cysteine, 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 cysteine. Or you will come across another configuration where you will observe another interesting thing where you have the iron, sulfur, iron, sulfur, iron, sulfur, 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 sulfur and then you are having the cysteine, 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 cysteine. So, these are basically what you observe are iron sulfur clusters. and how they appear in the proteins, okay. This is how you will observe that this is this example what you see out here. This is the classic case of rubidoxin. rubidoxin. And the second one what you see here, what I have mentioned is a classic case of uh, plant ferrodoxin plant ferrodoxin and which is basically 2 Fe and 2 S and similarly there is another example I wanted to cite which is a very interesting structure. And these are some of those examples which are kind of highlighting the fact possibly we have evolved in that iron sulfur world. So, here you have the iron, the sulfur, you have the iron, 
you have the sulfur, you have iron out the base, you have another sulfur out here, you have a iron out here, you have a sulfur out here and then from here popping out a sulfur with with cysteine there is a bond and out here with this iron there is a sulfur connected to cysteine. Similarly, with this iron there is a sulfur connected to cysteine and similarly with this iron there is a sulfur connected to cysteine. This is the classic case of chromatium ferrodoxin. Chromatium ferrodoxin, and this is essentially 4Fe, 4S. So, 4Fe, you have iron 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4Fe, 4 sulfur 1, 2, 3, 4 in the core. Okay. So, what I wanted to highlight here is much of these electron transport proteins are iron sulfur clusters. So, now going back, so this is the modern day what you observe. I have given you the three examples rubidoxin, where you have one iron at the center and you have these surrounded by sulfurs. Similarly, a second example where you have one iron here, one iron here and you have the sulfurs fiddling around here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So, coming back where I was talking about this self assembly of inorganic self assembly of iron sulfur cluster. So, this was believed that is where the iron sulfur theory by Gunther Dr. Hauser. If we see the iron sulfur world, the world theory, it basically says that these iron pyrite may have some way or other have self assembled. And on this self assembly, on this matrix or this self assembly may have been in the primitive pizza, may have been the first confined cellular structure or first confined self assembly to form a membrane. This is possibly the first ever membrane or Or a, or a scaffold on which things got synthesized. So, the next jump into the game is if we consider these as iron sulfur moieties which are forming this confined structure. I am not showing you the bonding and everything, just kind of you know. So, this kind of clustering or self assembly <coughs> which leads to this kind of confined structure possibly acted as a template. So, say for example, I consider these as the iron sulfur clusters which are forming a structure like this, okay, which is a three dimensional structure. So, so these possibly have acted as a template 
so the first step was for forming a membrane like structure was or a confined cellular structure or any kind of confinement was self assembly and we'll come to that what are the significance of these self assemblies this self assembly of in this situation we are talking about iron sulfur platinum and molybdenum manganese and a series of them okay so mostly we are confined with the iron and the sulfur okay these kind of self assemblies acted as self assembly acted as a template what does that mean is on these templates the carbon molecules may have form complex structure or in other word these acted as a template for complex synthesis of bio inorganic and bio organic molecules how exactly this has happened this is a very tricky question but what we know is these molecules if we consider molecules like fes2 these molecules upon breaking breaking down could generate a significant amount of energy a energy which is extremely useful to synthesize molecules so in other words now you have to realize there are few concepts which are emerging so first we talked about an inorganic world where the very early phases of earth early earth and this is where the earth was cooling down and it was water all over the place and that's where possibly somewhere or other the self assembly of some of these iron sulfur compounds happened of course this was rich in compounds like h2s sulfur and so on and so forth okay and possibly for this self assembly one needed some form of energy input which the earth has in abundance because of uv high temperature pressure whatever you call it it is one heck of a turbulent system where this kind of synthesis possibly have happened so these kind of self assembly of iron sulfur compounds led to it's believed led to the first confined structure in terms of something on which which has self assembled like this on which the templates were developed to synthesize much more complex molecules this while talking about this one has to realize these are all our speculations the reason to believe this kind of aspect is because the remnant of this could be seen these kind of iron sulfur complexes could be seen in almost all the electron transfer proteins and all the electron transfer proteins are present on the membranes so if we talk about mitochondria we talk about chloroplast we could talk about even cellular membrane the whole cell membrane they all are rich in iron sulfur electron transfer protein like cytochromes ferrodoxin rubrodoxin likewise so that's why this theory of 
Gunther Wachterhauser of iron sulfur world theory it still holds the fort. Of course, there are people who do not accept it. But of course, there will be always speculations and there will be always con conflicting uh, ideas because none of us can really go back in time to figure out what happened. But for us, it is essential to understand this. The genesis of these electron transfer proteins could be as old as the evolution of the cell itself. So I'll close in here. In the next class, we'll take up from there and see what are the different ways cell has evolved and what are the basic uh, thermodynamical parameter, what we have to take into account. Thank you. Thank you.